live in uh, Kailua. So I'm with the Kibala team. So again, mahalo for all of you for being here. I realize this is a very busy time of the year, so I appreciate you taking the time to be here tonight. This is the first of two public scoping meetings. It is a joint public meeting on the notice of intent to prepare a draft environmental impact statement and a draft management plan for the proposed Heia National Estuarine Research Reserve System in Kaniwai Bay, Hawaii. That is probably going to be the last time I'm going to say that. So in the future, we're going to refer to it as, as NERS, N-E-R-R-S. So if you hear that, that's what it's for. Um, but if you are here for this meeting, you're at the right place. If you've come to hear something else, um, you're free to stay as well. So thank you. We have in the back, there's a sign-in sheet. Please uh, sign in if you can, because the public comments I'm going to take from the, the list of the sign-in. Um, there are some refreshments that have been um, provided by Ko'ola Poku, Hawaiian Civic Club, and Joanne also brought some, some pastries. So please help yourself. There's some water in the back. So um, we all did some introductions. Let me just do some formal introductions as far as the, uh, the project team that is involved in this year's project. We have Michael. As he said, he's from Virginia, he's with the NOAA office. We also have from NOAA today, we have, um, let's see, there is Chief Tanimoto, there's also um, Christine Kekueva, Bill Thomas, and Doug Parker, and did I miss anybody from NOAA? From Office of Planning is Rebecca Arneen, they are the state agency that's responsible for putting together the management plan. The site partners who actually prepare the nomination papers for this near site is Ko'olau Poko Hawaiian Civic Club, Ko'olau Poko Foundation, Kako'o O'ivi, Pai Pai or Heia, Heia State Park, and the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology. So again, thank you for all of you for being here. Before we get into a presentation by Michael and Paul, I wanted to give you some brief background on the NEARS site, that this community has actually been working on the Heia Estuary for many, many years. And not only Heia Estuary, but Kaniwai Bay, as they put together the um, Kaniwai Bay Master Plan. They've also been part of the Honeywood Bay Regional Plan, and other community efforts involving Heia and Honeywood Bay. But in 2012, former Governor Abercrombie sent NOAA a letter of request in exploring the feasibility of designating a reserve within the Hawaiian Islands. In 2013, the State of Hawaii, through the Office of Planning, undertook a comprehensive site selection process that included all of the counties not just Oahu, but Hawaii County and Maui County, Hawaii as well, to determine a proposed site in the Hawaiian Islands, as um, we currently do not have a designated Nears Reserve in Hawaii. In May of 2014, the governor nominated Heia, pursuant to a site selection process, estuary for the consideration as the Hawaii site. And I'd like to pleased to announce that in October 27, 2014, NOAA accepted the nomination and began initiating the planning efforts. So tonight is really the beginning, of the formal process of the NOAA, the NEARS designation, and the Office of Planning's management plan process. It is a joint public scoping meeting, both involving NOAA and the state of Hawaii through Office of Planning. And the purpose of tonight's meeting is to provide you information about the proposed NEARS designation and to really get, it's really about getting your comments, your thoughts, manao, about the scope or the content of the proposed draft EIS and the draft management plan, including identifying issues that should be addressed in both the draft EIS and the draft management plan. Tonight you will hear presentations by both NOAA and um, 
Office of Planning Consulting Team regarding both the draft of the, the NEARS designation site and the proposed EIS as well as the draft management plan. Before we get into the formal presentation, I always like to cover some logistics. Um, again, please sign in as we would take comments based upon the order people signed in. If you are interested in getting more information or being informed about the near site, in your sign-in sheet we've asked you to please include some contact information, mailing address or email address. There's also a comment form in the back there on how you can keep informed about the project. There's a very long website, we're trying to figure out a shorter website, but it's a very long website so I recommend you take the comment form but that's a way to keep informed as well as another opportunity to provide comments. The restrooms are in building A, you go above these steps, and it's at the end of building A. And again, there's restroom, there's refreshments in the black. Please help yourself. So with that, I'm gonna have a brief presentation first by Michael, um, who's gonna talk about the NOAA. I would ask that you hold your questions, clarifying questions on the presentation to after the presentation that perhaps during the presentation we may actually answer some of your questions, but if you could hold the questions to after them. And then after that will be Paul Conry, who will give you a presentation on the draft management plan process. Thank you, but I think we're going to try to drop the lights a little bit. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael. I'm from the uh, NOAA office at our headquarters in Silver Spring, Maryland. Um, and I'm going to uh, give you an overview of the NEAR system and also uh, the purpose of um, the environmental impact statement and what the requirements are and what we're asking for scoping today from, from the community. So we'll talk about the National Environmental Policy Act and what exactly we're looking for in the environmental impact statement. Uh, the national system and also be uh, describing what the state and federal roles are within the reserve system. So, uh, back in the 70s, Congress passed the National Environmental Policy Act, and there's two, uh, two facets to the, to the NEPA law. The first is, uh, requires the federal government to consider the impacts to, their federal, to the actions that the federal government takes. The second is for the federal government to inform the public about what those impacts are and to gather information from the public um, about their, um, the impacts that they anticipate and um, for us to consider. So with all federal actions, there are different levels of review that can happen. And with the designation of a NEAR, um, NOAA, as a federal agency, considers this uh, creating a new program. And so when we create a new program, we go through what is called an environmental impact statement. And this is the highest level of review for a national environmental policy that uh, the federal government does. And it's part of that EIS, so that's environmental impact statement, I'll be using that abbreviation. As part of the EIS, we are conducting, this is why we're here, it's called scoping. And so we're looking uh, to the community to help us in meeting those objectives of determining what the impacts are and being able to communicate those impacts. So we're looking from you to help us identify the issues that you think we should include in our assessment uh, as we go through this federal action. And so, uh, when we talk about the federal action, uh, the federal action that we're completing this EIS for is the designation of a proposed uh, NEAR as the um, state of Hawaii has given us in the nomination. So when we're doing the, um, the assessment, we will look at what was proposed as the nomination from the state, and then we'll compare that to uh, what we call no action. So what happens if no it takes no action? And then we'll also consider 
other alternatives related to a nomination at this site. So what we're looking for in scoping is what are those issues that might cause us to change certain aspects of what was put in the nomination from, from, this, from this state. So we're looking for, from you, um, issues related to um, what you would like to, us to consider related to natural resources and, and their management, what you would like us to consider related to um, cultural heritage. So uh, providing us that information allows us to go through and do an assessment for when we complete the federal action. So that is the purpose of, of scoping, uh, and we look forward to hearing your, your input. Uh, we are, I'm going to talk a bit about the national near system for a little bit, just so we have some context about what uh, near site here would be. So the NEARS is a system of 28 uh, NEARS across the country. Um, right now, uh, and, our, and our goal is to, or part of the reason we were established was to have um, a national system that reflects the diversity of coastal and estuary um, types around the country and also different regions around the country. And so as we see here, there, there, is, no, um, there is no reserve in Pacific. So um, as we go through, um, and we don't have a, a, a fish pond and coral, and coral reefs, so, so this represents a new type for, for a reserve system. So understanding what some of the benefits of having a near designation in your community uh, there is an increased opportunity for research and monitoring, uh, education and training, and research stewardship at the site here. Uh, so, designation of a reserve, of a NEAR, means that the state is now eligible to receive funding from NOAA to implement programs at the site. Uh, so that's one way that research can and education and training and, and um, research super resource stewardship. Another aspect is you become a part of a larger network of reserves. So we talked, I mentioned the 28 other reserves that we have across the country. So this is a, a large network where we are thinking about nationally issues that are important related to coastal um, communities. So um, water quality, climate change, habitat changes. So being part of a larger network allows for thinking nationally and also for um, working with peers in different communities across the country. So things that are learned in Chesapeake Bay or in Florida may have um, applications or may be transferred here. And similarly, things that would be learned in Hawaii near would also help inform other um, years across the country. So the, the, the three portions of why a near are designated um, are related to science, um, people and community, and natural and cultural resources. So long-term research and monitoring of coastal and estuarine areas, um, education and training, so for school children, um, professional development for teacher, community education, um, and then also resource stewardship, natural and cultural resources. And just um, aware that the, the designation of a NEAR does not create any new regulations um, from the federal government. Um, so these are the, the aspects of what a designation would mean very broadly. The, the national aspect of our program, besides being a national system, is this um, promoting stewardship of the nation's estuaries through science and education. So, uh, valuing nationally coastal and estuarine uh, ecosystems and communities as a valuable resource for our, our nation and promoting that through our science and education. And how we do that is through the 
the local designation of reserves. So nationally, we are promoting um, these ideas by using these special places around the country. And when we, so there, so there are those two aspects, um, a nationally significant program and programs that are locally relevant. So I just like to use examples so with our research and monitoring programs, we have a national research program, monitoring program related to water quality. So around the country, all our reserves are collecting the same information related to um, water quality and temperature and nutrients, all these different things. Um, but, so there's a nationally significant thing there where we're able to compare across, country, across the country um, and understand um, things. But, each reserve uses that information differently. So in our reserve in the Florida Panhandle, this, the information on water quality is used to um, inform the um, oyster industry, um, oyster aquaculture in Florida. Whereas in um, Chesapeake Bay, the same information that's being collected informs um, the seagrass the seagrasses and the health of the seagrasses in, in Chesapeake Bay. So same information from a national program, but being applied to the issues that are relevant to the local communities. Uh, there are specific roles that um, the state and federal partners have within a reserve. So uh, the state is the, the land owner and managers of, of the NEAR. The federal government does not have any um, ownership or, or management responsibilities. Um, and that is left to, to the state and, and local authorities. Um, the, once a reserve is designated, there are staff that are associated with a NEAR, a manager, a researcher, an educator, uh, and those would be state employees, they're not federal uh, employees. And then um, the state provides some of the funding to implement programs at the reserves. Uh, part of the federal role is to provide funding as well. So the federal government provides 70% of the funding and the state would provide 30% of the funding. It shows the commitment both from the state and the federal um, partners to implement programs together. Federally, in addition to the funding, we provide a national coordination role. So that national system of um, water quality monitoring. Um, there is a national coordination effort to help um, all the different years implement a, a research and monitoring program. Um, same with education. Um, and we'll get into some of these national programs in a few slides. And then we also can provide technical assistance. So the NOAA office has um, expertise and skills and resources that um, can become um, accessible through a designation um, through our programs. So those are some of the things, the, the roles that um, the state and the federal partners play within a year. So I did talk a bit about those and um, so um, one of the things that I did want to mention was that um, we support uh, national initiatives that are related in this last bullet to climate, habitat, and water quality. So nationally, the, these are the three broad areas that are significant and important for the national system in moving forward. And so we coordinate those national topics and then how they're relevant to um, each individual site is left up to um, the management at the, at the state level. So we have four national programs. Uh, the first one is re related to research. The next two are related to education and training. Um, and the, the fourth one is also related to research. And so let's go to the first. The, the first program is our system-wide monitoring program. And this is a national program where um, all the reserves are collecting the same type of information related to water quality, weather, um, changes in habitat, changes to land use, um, standardized protocols 
that um, are implemented at, at the reserves, um, that some of the information is made available in real time so you can access the information um, and see what's the water temperature, what the, the weather is, um, and that's um, being used at our reserves and by our partners. Um, and then we also have an application of our monitoring program into Sentinel sites, um, which you uh, may be aware of um, as um, there is two um, in the state. The next program that nationally occurs is our coastal training program. And so uh, we have a national coordination for coastal training. And, um, and at each site, we use the science and research that is developed at the reserves to help train decision makers so that they can um, make decisions, um, inform decisions based on science within the communities. Um, so this um, is very place-based, so we have a national program that um, helps to inform how to develop coastal training programs, trainings for, for the communities, but um, it's implemented locally based on the topics that are important here. Next one is um, K-12 education program. Nationally, um, we provide national coordination on curriculum um, and also K-12 education programs and um, training programs for teachers um, so they can bring back new concepts to and programs to students. Um, so again, national program related to training K-12 students curriculum that can be applied at the site level. And then finally we have a research program, Science Collaborative, where um, competitive research funds are made available to designated sites to um, work with communities to identify research needs and to develop research programs specific to the management needs to be applied um, at, at the local near sites. And then the next steps that we have um, to the environmental impact statement, the reason that I'm here to talk and the reason you're here to get the ideas for scoping, is that once we have um, ideas and the issues that are of concern, NOAA um, will be developing the environmental impact statement, Hawaii and NOAA and the partners will be developing the, the management plan. Um, and we'll have some more details on that shortly. Um, once we do develop that, we will have another opportunity for public comment. So you've had your op you'll have opportunity to, to identify issues, and then once the document's developed, you'll have the opportunity to comment on that. Um, and then once those documents are finalized, um, there will be a final decision on designation, um, what that will mean, and then. Um, Looking forward to a ceremony to celebrate that uh, eventually. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about the um, timeline shortly and some of the more details here with the steps. Um, and so I wanted to have the opportunity just to, uh, if there are any clarifying questions, if there's something up here that um, you did not understand, or just, um, just a few minutes to, to go over that, um, we'll have the opportunity to identify the issues that we want to talk about, but if, are there any clarifying questions that I can help answer about this? Do I even make the presentation available on the website? Yes, the, the pre, both presentations will be available from the OP website. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. So you made a statement that the federal government won't be involved in any of the <coughs> regulatory part of the well, when you read 15 CFR, um, it, it states in here that certain regulations may be necessary and the public may be limited in certain uses. So are you saying that that's strictly up to the state and not at all the federal So, so that it's the, the existing state regulations um, are the ones that are being enforced policies. There are no new regulations that are, are going to be put in place. Um, the enforceable policies are those that are the ones that are already existing from the state. And they have to be consistent with, uh, so the regulations that exist now are the ones that are consistent with the state policies. Okay. 
that's, that's a good point. Because there, we're not proposing tonight any new regulations. This is really just the first step in the designation of the new cycle. There are no either voting regulations or other regulations. Well, I, I, I understand that, but when you read this, it works. But consistent with resource protection and research objectives, public access and use may be restricted to certain areas of components of the system. That, that, that would be a comment we can um, talk and we will capture that in our comments and then we can talk afterwards about that um, and some of the issues and concerns. And then just one more question. Well, kind of along the same lines, um, I'm trying to read between the lines because I have the same concerns. I hear you saying that it's not going to change existing and there's no proposals tonight, but the, whatever rules that are on the books now can be changed in the future. So, and, and if it's not being proposed tonight, I hear you saying that it can be proposed in the future. So if your answer is no to that, where in writing can we reference that so that we can pass it on to our future generations so that they can say, no, when you guys did this designation, you said we could still continue doing what we're doing back in 2014. Right. So, so no new regulations at the time of designation. Yeah. And no new regulations that will come from the federal government. Um, any changes to any state level regulations would be the same process that um, would have happened anyway. Um, so there are no, there are no, the, the designation of a near site does not change how um, the existing process happens yet, or, or, or it, it can't, it won't, it won't change. And I realize it's hard to trust because you don't see anything, but that's really what this, this is the beginning of what we call public scoping. I think the comments that you guys read, I mean clearly there's a lot of fishermen here are worried about what is this meaning kind of rate. I think it's really important that when, during the comment period, you should make sure that you make that as a comment so that that's fully considered as they're drafting both the EIS and the management plan. Well, we have been making the comments and everything is going as if we haven't been heard. That's, that's the trust. Okay. And the trust is back from long ago when this Kanye Bay master plan was made. You know, this, this trust goes back way back, generations back. So yeah, there is no trust. And that's fair enough, but I would just um, urge you to make sure that that's a comment. I mean, and, I, and we're not here to, um, I guess I was, the walk isn't, the talk isn't the walk. You have to, you'll see what comes out at the end of the product. There'll be a draft EIS and a management plan. And if you don't, what may be helpful is looking, let's hear what's in the management plan, that process. So I've got Paul Connor, who's gonna talk about the management plan that will be prepared on behalf of the state and you can maybe address them the process. Okay, aloha, good evening. Uh, I'm Paul Conry, I'm uh, working with the Kuiwalda consulting team to help OP develop the, the Office of Planning to develop the management plan. That's a responsibility of the state to actually have the state be the entity that actually drafts that. They work with NOAA then to uh, make sure it's one consistent and kind of conforms with the national guidelines that have been set up for management plans for managing the, the nervous system but it, it really is a state responsibility to uh, you know take the lead and do the work and actually put into the management plan you know those those uh, ideas goals objectives that you know is coming from from the state from the community so uh, we'll go ahead and start and I think one of the things that uh, having the, the NER designation uh, do it will be new to Hawaii, but it will also be new to the entire national <coughs> system. And I think we've got a great opportunity here to, one, develop the management plan that will, one, be based upon a cultural foundation that honors and respects the cultural resources, assets, and protocols of this Ahupaha and reflects the community's manaho to ensure that the protection of sustainable management of value cultural, historical, natural resources uh, 
refers in the proposed norm. So it's really an opportunity for the public, for the community, for all of the families that have been here to actually shape what this thing is going to do in the future. And so there's an opportunity to really mold that management plan. So again, the management plan will be used then to uh, support our local management goals and objectives, you know, such as restoring thorough cultivation of fish pond aquaculture. Uh, it will support research, monitoring, stewardship and education projects locally. It will also be used to help develop and support our local partnerships to uh, carry out stewardship and education. It also has a role that it can contribute to national efforts such as climate change research and actually trying to figure out how we're going to deal with climate change. And the one thing about these plans are that one, they are, one, the, the initial one is broad in scope, but these, these management plans are living, they are updated every five years, so each management plan is really designed to be there for five years and then be amended and, and um, you know, updated on, on a five-year basis. So it's a continual process of making sure the management that you want to see the management that you need and will benefit from is being put in place. So there's uh, a national uh, authorized, or the, uh, the uh, authorizing legislation actually had requirements that have to go into each management plan. And so one of the things that we'll do as we're developing this is we'll make sure that we, you know, have all of those requirements in there. Again, it's our opportunity to actually put, you know, what it is that the NUR and Hawaii can really need to do and really function with and how it will then fit into that structure. So, uh, one, we wanted to make sure that we at least, you know, gave an idea of what all of those uh, components of the management plan are. And then you can begin thinking about that. And then also think about you know, how, how we will develop the programs here that you know, fit within that system, but then achieve our goals and objectives that we want to see uh, for this this place. So again, the uh, content of the management plan, there's an introduction, and this is usually where you have a description of the resources, a description of the site, the boundaries, and all of the kind of background information that really, you know, identifies the place, the cultural history, all of those things that are important to this nerve. The management plan also has to have a strategic plan within. And that's where you're outlining the long-term vision, the goals, the objectives, and the things that are needed uh, for managing the site and uh, taking care of it. Uh, they also have to have a program foundation. And you heard about some of those programs, and so we'll describe the different programs that will be put in place uh, here, the education, the monitoring, the research, the postal training, uh, and then any, any other important programs. Uh, there's also an administrative plan and that would basically be you know, how the, uh, the uh, NER is set up uh, with the uh, state agency uh, that's implementing it, and then even how the community then is, is being uh, pulled into uh, the advisory portion. Uh, and then also there's a resource protection plan, and that is to one, uh, look at, you know, what, what are your goals and objectives for resource protection, what needs to be done, and also just identifying uh, those, uh, those actions in the future. Uh, one of the other necessary components is the plan to ensure public access and visitor use. So that's, that's a necessary component of every plan. Uh, there's also facilities development and improvement plans if there's a uh, need for developing facilities to help implement the plan or the future. And acquisition, if that is an element that, that would be needed here, we'll take a look, listen to what you have to say, uh, and, and see if that's even appropriate. Resource manipulation plan, if there's any, any need to actually do uh, resource manipulation for restoration, things like that. And finally, a restoration plan, if 
there is a need to actually restore some of the habitats and some of the assets back to a functional state. So those are really the, the elements that are all going to go into the plan. And what we're going to need is one, to get your, your ideas, what, what you actually want to see, go into that and shape that plan to really reflect what the goals and aspirations are of the community. So um, what's the process going to be? And right now we're, we're actually beginning the process. Uh, step, step one is just developing the initial draft of the plan. And we're starting out with scoping meetings for the management plan. And that's where you're here right now. This is the start of this developing the management plan. So then after we uh, go through um, the scoping, uh, we'll begin to get collect input from the public. And then the state will need to draft the strategic plan and the management plan based upon your public input. We'll also then, uh, part of what we'll do is begin to pull in all of the good work that's already been done uh, to uh, fit into the management plan. Uh, then after the management, after we've collected that input uh, the, and drafted it, you know, we anticipate that uh, we'll have the draft management plan and at the same time Noah will be working on a draft NEPA document. So we hope to have all of that uh, completed by about June 30. So it's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty uh, ambitious, thank you, uh, ambitious uh, deadline. So uh, one, there's lots of information out there. We hope to get lots of good feed input Monaco from all of you so that we can, let's get this job done. Let's, let's, let's get this uh, plan developed. So then after the uh, step two would be then taking that draft and, and moving through, uh, through it to get it finalized. And so uh, first off, we'll take the draft management plan that the state develops and then also at the same time the draft NEPA document uh, will be then released to the public for public comment and public hearing. And it's after we develop it that, again, it will go out to you. We'll again get your input, your monopoly, uh, make sure that we're getting exactly where we want to go with this and put into the document. And uh, we really look forward to your feedback on that. Uh, so then after uh, we've drafted it, uh, we'll take it out to this uh, additional round of the public input. And then it will be revised based upon that public uh, comment and input. And then finally, we'll take that and create the final management plan and the final NEPA document. Again, we're lucky projecting that we'll be finished with that, that we'll be completed by the end of 2015, so by the end of uh, next year. So it's uh, basically a one-year process that we're looking at. Thank you. Does anybody have any clarifying questions for Paul on the management plan process? Okay. With that, I really want, I want to go into the formal public scoping, which is really why most of you are here tonight. Um, and if you don't mind, I just want to cover some kind of ground rules for public comment. We don't have a court reporter today, but we have Lou here who's here, and she's going to take all the comments, and they're going to be part of our formal record. So when you come up, if you don't mind, if you could please state your full name for the record so that Lou Kia is accurately re um, noting your comment. Um, there are some people that may not be comfortable already coming up. We have comment forms in the back. Please feel free to take one of those, submit your comments tonight, or else you can um, submit your comments at a later time after you've had some time to think about it. I know that we have, we have, a, we have a really nice, comfortable group, but if you wouldn't mind I'd like to give everybody an opportunity to speak once before you speak twice. And again, we do have some time, but if you could, we're going to try to limit your first comments, hopefully not more than three, four minutes. Um, I'm going to ask you to summarize if you kind of get close to that. That's to ensure that everybody gets a chance to speak. And then, um, we do have, we have to leave the cafeteria by seven o'clock. So, I'm going to ask you at times to summarize so that we can make sure that we give everybody an opportunity to speak who wants to speak. 
Now, this is a public scoping process, so when you give your comments, it's not as if some, either Michael or Paul, or someone's gonna answer your comments. So please understand, your comments are gonna be part of the record, and they will be considered when the draft EIS, NEPA document, and the management plan is prepared. But this is your opportunity to give us your comments about what should actually be in the document. But we are probably not going to have an opportunity to actually respond to your comments. So with that, I, I've got a list of people who have signed up to uh, provide comments. I'm going to go through that list first, and then after that, if anybody else wants to comment, I will give you an opportunity. But generally, I like to ask if there's any kupuna in the room, who will at least admit to being kupuna, who wants to come up first, please feel free to do so. Okay? With that, um, the people that I have signed up is, I've got Ernie Theodore, who's the first, who's going to test, come up and give a comment, then Michael Chung, and Kelvin Ching, and Donna Campbell. And again, after that, we're going to be open if any additional comments. So, Ernie? I know you came up early and wanted to make a comment. You can hold it. Or... <coughs> uh, mine is a question. Uh, I guess it's the Office of Planning. Uh, what determined the outline of the boundary, the proposed boundary? And uh, I have one uh, suggestion. I don't know if it's feasible. Uh, we all, a lot of the fishermen here the whole time, we all know at Coconut Island, there's no fishing whatsoever. It's off limits. There's a perfect place for an estuary. And the other place is Korai. It's enforced by the military. You can't even pass through there. You pass through there, they come shooting out with the Zodiac to make sure you get out of there. That's another place for the estuary. Uh, I saw the boundary of the chart there. And it was changed from the previous meeting. So Let why, me why the Let change? Me get. Let me get. Uh, yeah, that would be a good idea, please. Yeah. Uh, I see some of the the boundary lines. It has part of the conservation lands. Why part of the conservation lands? Why not all? And the boundary, proposed boundary in the ocean, it includes certain patch reefs, which I think is uh, unnecessary because Coconut Island uh, itself is much more productive than these other three. Anyway, the previous chart, this line included these two patch reefs, and this big reef here. Came on, open, but now they changed it. So uh, I just like to know what determined. I, mean, I just wanted to know what determined the, the boundary research or whatever. But like I said, we have two natural estuaries that is in force: Coconut Island by DLR and Coral Island by military. That's it. Thank you, Ernie. Uh, no one's going to answer, right? No one's going to answer, but these are good comments. <coughs> Hopefully the, plan, the document will actually reflect those comments. So the next person I have up is Me. Michael. Oh All right, Michael. Yeah. <laughs> you can send your name for the record, too. My name is Michael Chung, and I'm a fisherman of Kanyoi Bay. I mean, I fish all over the place, but mainly Kanyoi. My uncle port is Kanyoi. And uh, that was my concern as well. That uh, the the lake, the lines change, okay? Like already said, it used to encompass these reefs, and then it came around this reef over here. And I brought up this last the first meeting that we had that there is commercial operations here, and I was assured that nothing's gonna change. The fishermen are not gonna be excluded from this area, and so some of the fishermen are wondering why. Did they change it? If nothing's going to happen, nothing's going to change in the usage of this estuary place they want to make, why did they exclude this commercial guys? I don't know why. Okay. Um, I mean, you guys must have thought that excluding them would help something. 
But we're, as fishmen, we're worried because if you kept it inside of the estuary line here, then and nothing's going to change, right? But why did they exclude it? Now, are fishermen going to be excluded as well? That's what I'm worried about. I, and I, that's all I care about is the fishermen. I mean, I care about a lot of other stuff too, but you know, um, there's a whole lot of issues for Kanye Bay, like I said before, the water. Uh, is, is you guys water quality um, check gonna be from present day? It's gonna be from that, right? Because we don't have the water, the fresh water that we had from many years ago. It's all the way to Eva, Kunia, all those other places. Um, from the whole island, actually, they're taking the water for our, our farms and for our people. But if you give back the water to the <coughs> to Kanoe Bay, a lot of things come back. Male, moi, um, all of the, the big fish, like I said in the first meeting. There's there's only one aku boat, and you know what? That aku boat is done already. The guys are retiring. You cannot blame the aku boat for catching all the bait because only got one aku boat. When before you said 20, the state you said tons of aku boats. You know, there's no water. But that was my um, part of my thing too. That um, the boundary. Because I brought it up the first meeting, and why has it changed? That's what I'm wondering. And the fishermen are wondering, if nothing's going to change, why did it change? Because it's going to be excluded. Or well, the fishermen are going to be excluded. Um, so that's about all I got for now. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael. After Michael, I have uh, Calvin Ching and then Donna Castle. Yes. I can yeah. No, do you, anybody want to? Oh, we'll put it back on there. It's okay. Okay. okay, my name is Kelvin Chen. Um, I also grew up in the Bay and have been involved with a lot of the <coughs> issues. When I was in college, I held attend all the meetings for the master plan, and I'm very disappointed in how everything has come about and nothing is really recognized in the plan. So I think this is just another go through the motions. This one is probably going to be adopted because it has different motives. Um, some other questions I have, like I said earlier, and this is my comments, this is my goals, my aspirations, my input. Um, first of all, if there's going to be no new regulations, I'd love to see it up front right now so that I can reference to my great-great-grandchildren that what is happening then in the future is going to be what is today because I know it's not going to happen and that's the unfortunate part. Um, we said this is the beginning. I see it as the beginning of the end for us. Um, so partners in a management plan. Um, who decides who the partners are? Can we be partners instead of being public input and public comment? Because by the time we get co public comment, Everything is all said and done. Um, you know, I see folks going back to the Ahupua. That's not recognized today. State waters is state waters. It's not just for one certain community. Okay, we're piecing off the ocean the way we pieced off the land. We're privatizing the ocean. And that's not right. We went from the Ahukua'a system and we went to what we have now and then we went back. But you guys saying that this process is not going to change anything. It's already changing it. You're going back to the old Hawaiian system. I have no problem with that. If everything was done the same way across the state. Okay? So, but we don't can live in two worlds. You cannot have the national support, but you might be sovereign. That's, that's hypocritical to me. Um, State money. Yeah, where is the money coming from? That's another question I have. We're doing the same thing and expecting different results. I'm sure there will be different results. Um, so, what I want to see 
I want to see this nurse just killed already. Save time, save money, save the money that we don't have. Okay, that's that's my input. Um, I might have more. Thank you. Thank you, Kelvin. I have um, Donna Campbell. And then, if anybody after Donna wants to speak, please let me know. section. 
of the strain, the perennial strains especially. The four of them that I, I know of are Ha'iku strain, Ka'ivikei, Iole Ka'a, and Ha'iya strain. These streams flow ultimately into the wetland and then through it and to the bay. And the area that they converge is the Mulibai, right? That estuary, that are where the where the Kai meets the Bay. In order for, for, for any kind of reserve to work, and if we're talking about managing resources in the best way possible, then we really cannot leave the Malka sections out of any kind of, um, I want to say land, but in other words, the waters that come from Malka, that come from these streams, are the ones that are the source waters that eventually end up in the bay. But before they get to the bay, they go through a lot of smaller communities, smaller ecosystems, in which they are critical parts of how those ecosystems manage themselves in terms of species, myota, flora, flora, etc. Um, and so it's really critical in this plan that the idea of Apukua'a isn't just, it's not a watershed, and it shouldn't be called a watershed because it's not a watershed. What a watershed does is say, Okay, there's a bunch of water and it all flows through one area and all of it drains in the same place underneath. An Ahupua is so much more than that. An Ahupua says that everything in it is relational. Everything in it is bound by reciprocity. And that includes the people who are in it, live in it, people who go on the ocean, people who take care of the fight, people who are in the wetlands now and trying to fight. I think what I'm trying to say here is that our cultural perspectives have to be included in the verbiage of this plan. And I don't know who you have to guide you in that process, but certainly you have a lot of volunteers here in this room. You have worked hard for many, many, many years and have been a part of many, many planning efforts but I'm thinking that maybe this should be uh, one of the ways in which we really begin to see how we would like how we would like to have it stated. My suggestion is that you can include these streams, not the whole stream and not the whole Ely, and don't don't make the boundary that includes the entire Akukuakea. But we would like to see the streams be um, evaluated tested for flow, tested for its condition, tested for its groundwater um, capabilities, how much of it is actually being bled into the um, wetland, and how that's affecting the fish pond. There's a tremendous amount of studies going on right now in terms of science that can help to um, bring that kind of question to, um, you know, so that we kind of begin to know what the answers are and what directions that might point us into. But I think uh, what, is, what is my main concern is that, well, and, and, and Kelvin said it, you know, it's pretty hard to go national when you try to be sovereign. But in between those two words is a little space where a little negotiation can be taking place. Uh, when it comes down to the Aino, we must begin to advocate for that. And there must be a way, because my other question is, are these boundaries then, since they don't look the same from when the last meeting occurred, are these arbitrary boundaries? Are they malleable? Can they change? And if so, who changes them? And if, if they are changed, who said they could be changed? So these are the, the kinds of things that should be answered because um, that's how you establish trust. And as long as our history remains what it is, we will always be diligent, and we will always be looking out for the best interests of the Aina. Yeah, because we don't, uh, the way it is right now, I understand that, the, that this designation can help reserve, can help preserve, perhaps, um, but at the same time, it might have unforeseen ramifications in the future as well. So there's a good side, and there's a bad side, and, uh, just want to make sure that however it's written up, 
Um, it always takes it to the uh, culture component, and that you consider um, adding the strings. And you know, a good way to look at it is just take a haiku string in Haiku Valley. You take the string from its source, and you can probably will have to do studies or analysis to see exactly where the point of light, where it starts. And then maybe go, I don't know, if you have the middle of the stream and you go five feet on each side, maybe that's a good boundary to begin with, from Malka to Mokai. At least, especially where those waters flow into the wetland, and then through the estuary and the fish pond, and on into the bay. That's my mom. Mom, um, I have Luella who would like to make a comment. Do I have anybody else? Hold on. Thank you very much, Luella. Do I have my hair line? AO to some of the remarks made earlier by uh, Don Campbell, very eloquent, eloquent, eloquently stated our position about um, finding the right balance for cutting the bay. And one of the things I, th I heard tonight and I think will help us move forward in a healthy way is to include the voices of people like our fishermen who have legitimate concerns. They need to be part of this. this um, action that we want to do to ensure the future health of the bay, not just about a museum piece. The bay is a living organism for our people for the future, for the generations to come. So we need to all work together to make sure it's healthy. And that's why I feel strongly that we need to accept the help being offered to identify the problems that are causing, what is causing the problems in the South Pole, what is causing the problems in the Bay, what is causing the problems in the streams and, the, and the, on the land. And that I look forward to having the research done that, that this nurse project will do. Um, I don't qualify science as junk or not because I'm not a scientist, but I do think that a lot of us have our own natural skills, our common sense to observe what's going on around us. And I think that we can work with those who have the skills, like our scientists around us. I don't care where you come from. If you know, if you have knowledge, you can help us. I'll take help from anybody. I'm not afraid to ask for help. And I'm, I'm grateful to those who have come from faraway places to help us today. And I think it's kind of rude to tell them get out when they're offering help. So that's kind of sad. Um, we Hawaiians look for balance. We want, them, want to live in harmony with our oceans and with our land. And over the last hundred years, it's been shifted out of balance. We're concerned because uh, I notice it's less fish in this bay. You guys see it all the time. You're there every day. But I don't go out that often, but I see it already. You know, it's in just the last 10 years. Even. So it's really sad, and I'm hoping through projects like NERS, it's not meant to, uh, my, my understanding, it's not meant to lock us out, but to ensure our future for ourselves and for generations to come. And the only way we can make sure of that is to stay engaged, to stay involved. This is our land, and our water, and we're going to make sure that we, we have our voices. Nobody should be out of, out of the, outside the window looking in. You guys are part of this, and they need to be included in this working group of sorts, whatever we're putting together to make theirs work. I think that everybody who wants to be a part of the solution should be part of this working group. And uh, I, I welcome the Manawa of, of everybody that wants to be proactive to solve the problems of Kanye we made. So mahalo to everybody who came and we hope that we move forward on this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Do you have anybody else who wants to make a comment to oh, Uncle Jerry? Oh, you sure? Maybe Uncle Jerry wants to close. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jerry Kalwifa. I'm from Yerke. I'm raised in there. I'm still here. Um, 
before anybody uh, talk about uh, doing uh, air areas, first thing I want to know about this red line. I have talked about this red line being moved in certain areas that move. we want this red line to move more out in the direction that won't be uh, blocking no community because where I'm talking about, there's no community around. And this is a, a type of place that uh, we look into so that we don't have any conflict with the uh, community. And most likely you would get conflict. It happens already. By the way, I've done a lot of research um, doing the, uh, back in the, in the 60s, uh, doing with alternative kids, um, uh, the key project. And that's how I really got involved in involving schools, like the high schools where they were uh, putting out those kids and I got involved in at least 30 of them. We've done a, a seaweed project, which we call uh, 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 Gracilaria uh, Oko. On the Oko part, I did the scientific part where I'm the only one that made seedlings. From that time on, I've kept on moving on and I wanted to get deeper and deeper. Why? I'm concerned about Kanoe Bay. I've seen it with tons of fish. I caught it, a lot of fish with my family. And I know how to do it. And today, we do not we do not show anybody that type of fishing. Why? Because there is not enough fish in Kanoe Bay. That's why when I dive today, I go for every island except Kanoe Bay. Kanoe Bay, the fish is too well educated. <laughs> you gotta really think like a fish to catch on my name. But let me tell you, it's really uh, kind of not, not as much as before. Finding out why. Um, then I got into tropical. The tropical is one of the things I see disappearing from right from the earth. Some of the fishes right now to be extinct. And you know, I ask a lot of fishermen, you know what's happening? You, you ever take a good look at the bait? Yeah, 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 I, I, I see the bait, yeah. But can't you see what missing? Show me what fish is missing here. The ones we have every day would, would be a menace, would steal our bait. Today you don't see that. But you know what? I went back and do a, another research, research on that fish. Hey, it's coming back and we see at least one or two. So it kind of make my feeling good that we really, really should look into that kind of thing. Uh, tropical fish, corals. Now I went into corals and I end up in caught try to protect all these corals that we have in, right in front of my place. Uh, we, we, I went to court, you know what? It's just like going over there for nothing. All what I'm fighting for is just like all in the air. The judge would let them out, just slap their hands. Bye-bye, you can go out. Why? Because the judge don't even know the rules. So all these things we're looking at, Make sure we have a ruling in the back to back it up. Tropical fish, again, I try to protect Kanoe Bay on the tropical fish because I go out with a tour. I take tours out. And notice when the first did that, they had a bundle of fish. When we go back, because we feed the fish, when we go back on shore, there come these crazy guys with nets surrounding the whole area like Papa. Papa is the, the coral reef. They surround the whole place. And this, this, when I went out again, I see less. And each time it's getting less and less. So some of these places really are looking at it, especially Coconut Island. Right? When I see people walking on top of the reef and broken the corals and saying they, uh, they have the rights to go there, 
which they were lying. They asked permission, they say, I know they lie because I'm there. I was, the first thing I see when they walk in the reef, how the heck you walk in on the reef? I don't even do that. And nobody do that. They should leave Coconut Island alone and use that as a restoration area. Because we did the research on it. We did. And the research is excellent. That's how we did our studies, our limo, limo ogo. Now, I have another project. Um, in fact, I just did one more project called Mauka Makai, Ancient Antidamic. Uh, we need to do a little bit more on that. Uh, we did Mauka Makai and uh, we had six uh, members of Afsunda. All of them, like he lay was one of our, our members. And we had um, several people out there. We just done a Malka Makai project, which I talk about and did it. And did the project. So, um, I'm going to try to know stuff while I get carried. Um, he lay knows about it. And why we did that? Because I'm in the lobby business too. I'm the one that helped build the Kalo in Ehia. And I'm still doing that. Work with Ehia some time on the fish one to make sure progress go good. Um, what we're doing is to analyze from Malka, which we're talking about, which this line need to be moved more towards the Blue Mountain. Why? Because there's rivers from Uncle Lolo's place. That's the only position, uh, place we uh, didn't monitor yet. Till a uh, certain place you need permission. Till I get the permission, then we can close the book up. Um, the next thing we're looking at, because we in seaweed, uh, to protect our coral reef. This is where action happened. Right there is the root for our seaweed and also our fish. Uh, that's it for tonight. <laughs> See you guys next time. Mahalo. Thank you, Uncle Jerry. years uh, in Kanyere all my life. I've swam at Yili Pond. I went up to Makaveli Valley Falls. I swam over there. I swam at Ice Pond up by uh, Luku side. Uh, I go to uh, Mokapu. So I'm pretty much walking to Mokai. I know the Hanabara places here. I pretty much grew up between Kanyere and Heia. Uh, and did you talk about uh, Kanyere uh, My uh, my wife's Ohana, uh, the Liwe Kuliana, is right below that place. Kanel Pio used to be on Hei Ao. Yeah. Kaupo, where you're from, by Manala, is a good place too. Uh, I just want to address, like when they're talking about the fishing, the, the first part of this Heva was when the Army Corps of Engineers came in and they started dredging the bay. When they started dredging the bay, Change the currents of the bay. The more that wash, that clean out now. So that part, maybe science can help us out. Then when they built these subdivisions here, no thought into building the subdivisions. You concrete it, water wash right out, mud wash right out into the bay, kill the bay. Now, I hear. You know, people are afraid of doing stuff, but if we don't do anything, then what are we going to do? How are we going to make it better as a community here? If we just do nothing here, what is our option? We can get together as a community someplace else, but actually do something. Because if we do nothing, this is only going to get worse. We have invasive species of Malka, 
it goes into the stream, goes to Makai. Okay, it floods up the stream. Right now we have several organizations. We have uh, Waipao up in the uh, Haipu side. Um, we're planting uh, Kalo, we're opening up the streams on the Yolika side, which is uh, behind Haiku plantations. We have uh, Pai Pai Heia, down by the fish pond. Beautiful work they're doing. We have Mabua Hua Ai. If you guys want to get involved in something, get involved with these groups. They're doing something, actual something, to make this place better. If you look at any Abu Pua'a in the state of Hawaii, Heia is on the move. Now, I'm not saying we could yet, but we're doing something about it. Because like I said, if we don't do anything, then what kind of future are we gonna leave for our kinky? You know, my parents didn't do anything. You know, they let it go. We got what we got because the parents just, you know, we let the subdivisions go, we let the streams go. Can we drink the water in their stream? If something happened today, hurricane or whatever, like they did in Kauai, no more power, no more water. Can you drink the water in your stream? I know we can drink the water because we're way Mauka. But I don't know about you guys. Do you know that the H3 freeway and all the other free highways, all that asbestos from your top, from your cars goes into the water, and where does that go? It goes into the stream, goes into the bay. You know, what can we do now? How can we control our communities so we have something that we can offer our children later on? You know. Uh, the neighbors, they spray, uh, <coughs> what is that, uh, Roundup, not bad, kill the, kill the weeds, go in the stream, right? Spray uh, your Roundup, bees go on top, kills the bees. What are we doing to better our community? So, like Uncle Rocky said, you take care of limu. I mean, Uncle Jerry said, come, come my <laughs> Uncle Jerry said, take care of Limu, take care of Limu Lipoa, the Manuea, you're gonna get that fish gonna come back. For, for eat that, that Limu, yeah? The Hawaiians, they know. Sure, we cannot go back, you know, a hundred years, you know. But if you think about a hundred years ago, it wasn't so long ago. And we really mucked it up within the past hundred years from what I from what I've put in the hand. You know. I have my sisters there talking about, you know, they used to play in tarot patches, and that was only in the fifties and sixties. Yeah. For a long while, Kanye Heia was not producing any color. In 1948, 49. They had their biggest production of kalo coming out of here, okay? And after that, it just slowly went downhill. Now we're starting to produce kalo again in, in these communities. And by producing kalo, we cleared the streams. By producing kalo, they uh, you create what they call um, water recharge. The water, water, water supply calls it water recharge, recharge units, yeah? So the water seeps into the tower patches, goes into the aquifer. Good, yeah? So, last thing I just want to say is, when I started out with, if we do nothing now, then what are we going to do? Okay? Just want to leave you with that. Mahalo. Mahalo. Rocky. Just to touch bases on what, uh, what was said tonight, um, what Kevin is ready, what Kevin was with the um, Kanye Bay Regional Council. And for your information, I talked with uh, former Senator Mike McCartney, who's now the Chief of Staff for the Governor of the Kanye Bay Regional Council. He's getting back into action. We talked with um, the legislature, we talked with Ken Ito and Jen, um, Joe Fukuda, as well, and brought it back into like it's not sunsetted anymore. Right now, we have five members. Dar, um, as soon as they get their um, um, 
Department of uh, um, Public Research and so on. As soon as they get their um, administrator or whatever back into place, it should be, it should be getting to be. Dean Calvin, maybe you should get back on the committee, especially the fishermen, good to get involved. And what um, Wally and um, um, Don, Donnie said, it's true of uh, Wally, and that's right, I used to drink a lot of milk, uh, and I always think about that. If we do get a hurricane, well, our water resources is cut off. Where are you going to get the water from? I would go up by going. I put this in Ohio, I would drink water over there. <laughs> and another thing, you know, um, all my life, all my life, my father's life, my grandfather's life, we always have maka'ala kuteya. Why? Because that is our resources. And no matter what you say, he is an ahakwa. Like kahalu is an ahakwa. In Kanyohi Bay, there is nine ahakwa. We have 11 ahakwa in the Kola Pope of Mopu. And I'm not correction to you, it's not correction, but it's not the Kola Pope of Foundation, it's the Kola Pope of Foundation Club and the Kola Foundation is partners. We also got by power that um, um, Wally mentioned, we propose them. These are the partnerships. We are the ones that wrote to get part of NERS. We've been active in trying to restore our resources. And like Wally said, get active, restore the resources, maintain, sustain what we got. Don't just come over here and grumble. And we invite you guys to come. Thank you very much. We invite you guys to come and we need your help. Together we can do it. It's a car core thing. But if we're gonna sit here and fight each other, we're gonna go back another hundred years. No, we got very little left. Look at the news, look at our coral. They're trying to save the coral. Look at the fish, the depletion of the fish. We take school groups out on the glass bottom boat. We get letters, thank you very much for your blood, mother, for good. Although we didn't see any fish, <laughs> how do you think they make us feel? It's telling me, we gotta get a grip. Get back to the resources. And your fishermen can help. And one of the, I think, is actually a part of fishermen. They're taking the little fish, but the kids cannot see it. That's what I got to say. And all the rest of my life, every time I hear the word hey, here, I'm on top of it. Because you know what? These are valuable resources. And like Wally said, we're back on the map. We, the people of hey, here, Maka, Makai, down to HIV, we're trying to restore and sustain the resources. Either you're going to help us or you're going to fight us. No matter what, we welcome you. Hallelujah. All right. Mahalo, Auntie Rocky. Do I have anybody else who'd like to make a comment tonight? I've really appreciated the thoughtfulness and um, obvious passion all of you have had. And I thank you for your comments. There are different ways to make a comment, not only um, providing your oral comment tonight. Take a comment form in the back. You can. Oh, sorry. Wally, one yeah. more. Yeah, just, quick, just quick, one, one more quick one. Quick, 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 quick. Wow, uh, hey, yeah. Actually, goes to the marine base, yeah. So let's, you know, take this thing way out here to the marine base because they get good fishing grounds out there. I don't know if you fishermen been out into Hey, yeah, where it's forbidden, but you know. It's a good place, good place to do some uh, studies. You can probably see how to fish, you know, what it used to be like out there. Not to mention the fish pond, yes. There are several fish ponds out there, and uh, a, a place, uh, uh, what is that? For us to make, for the native ones to make salt again. So, you know, if we can use that place, we have some people out there like volunteer to make salt. Mahalo for that comment. Um, but again, there are other ways to make comments. You can fill out your written comment forms. Um, please check the Office of Planning website. And I know it's a really long website. So take a comment form as the website is on top of there. Some of you, Calvin, Donnie, you guys raised, you guys raised some really good questions about it. So how do we get involved more? How do we participate? There's an additional opportunity for you to participate in the process. There will be some working groups that are going to focus on more targeted areas. There will be a research monitoring that will focus on current research, research gaps, traditional ecological knowledge and indigenous knowledge. There will be a, a focus group on 
education, training, interpretive that will focus on the K-12 environmental programs, adult education programs, teaching training, and then there's going to be a public outreach resource management focus group that will focus on public access, cultural practices, and signage. So if you are interested in, in participating in this additional focus group, there's going to be some handout forms in the back. Take that and contact Rebecca through either phone or through email, and she will keep you informed of when those meetings are going to be. Those focus groups are going to be really helpful to provide us additional information as we consider the strategic goals for the management plan as well as the NOAA's NEPA document. And those will probably be convening fairly soon, probably January, February, to meet this ambitious schedule. So please take a form that's in the back, participate in one of these focus groups. It will be a much smaller group, and it will be your opportunity to provide us more information that can be considered as these plans are being developed. So I would urge you to take one of those forms with you. Again, check the websites. Um, information is going to be included on the websites about background information about the NEARS. It will include some of the historic information. And we want it to be really respectful. I think, um, Michael, you mentioned the Kanye Bay Master, um, the Master Plan. Oh, Kelvin mentioned that. The intention of the management plan is not to reinvent the wheel. It is to build upon the good information, the good community engagement that's already taken place. So a lot of that information is going to be um, reviewed, and the management plan should really build upon that, not start all over again. I don't think anybody wants to start from scratch and disrespect all of you who have participated for a long time in this resource. So the management plan is going to look at all of those existing information and then build upon what we currently hear as well as the comments that we receive. So I would urge you to take one of those comment forms, take one of the flyers about these focus groups to get more information and participate. We do have one more public scoping meeting that's going to be on Friday. It's going to be at the NOAA Fisheries Honolulu Service Center at 1139 Nimitz Highway. It's next to the Nikos restaurant at Pier 38, 38. So it'll be from 5 to 7 on Friday. I know I apologize. Um, those of you who have all made it, this is the holiday season, and I really thank you for the time that you've spent with us tonight. So with that, again, mahalo, malama puna for all of your heartfelt comments and obvious concern about this resource. Again, there's a little bit of um, uh, refreshments in the back. Take some on your way out and pick up the flyers if you can, if you're interested in those focus groups. So again, mahalo.